Tonight is November the 5th, 2014, <clears throat> and I've been playing with this very nice uh, Macintosh MC40. There you go. Case is in really good shape. Got some uh, funny uh, stuff on the chassis there, as you can see. But overall, it's in excellent shape. I did have a bad power supply capacitor that I swapped out. <clears throat> Excuse me, I've been testing many different tubes. These are the Tungsol KT66's new stuff. Performed very well. I've got a pair of uh, Electro Harmonics here. Mixed with a Sovtec that performed very well. So do these very nice 7581s. Pair of Macintosh branded uh, 6L6s. These uh, Jan 6L6W GBs, which are also 5881s, perform exceptionally well. It just does a marvelous job with every one of these tubes. Now, I happen to have a boatload of these things that musicians have given me over the years. They'll just show up at my door and say, Here, I've been collecting these things for the last 10 years, and you want them? And give me 10 pair. I've had that happen to me three times. And then I've given away enormous amounts of them to other people. Anyway, the purpose of the night is I found one that is just absolutely horrible. This one right here. This is a bad tube. Has nothing to do with the brand. Just I happen to find a really bad one. And when I check it in the tube checker, I have this uh, TB7DU here. It'll measure about 28 and starts dropping rapidly. Okay. And to prove that it's a, it's bad, I ran these guys, and it's one of these traces up here. I don't remember if it's, if it's the blue one or the yellow one. It doesn't matter. These are two good tubes. Okay, here's, here's when I put that one bad tube in there. Here's what it looks like. It just goes completely out of sight. See, there it is up there at 39.5% at 20 hertz. It comes down, it never gets, look, see, it never gets better than that. It's pretty bad. I think we can all agree that it's bad. That's with the, the other Sovtex in there. That's with one of these pair in there, and um, then I just swapped that one out. So there's a 100% chance that that's the bad tube. With that said, I'm going to bust it open and see if I can see what's wrong with it. And before I bust it open, I'm going to bed the cathode. I think that's what goes wrong with just about all of them. This may be redundant because I know I just made one on cathodes, but let's see. I'm going to bust it open without a lot of fanfare and, and uh, videotaping it, and I'll disassemble it, and then we'll examine it very carefully and see if we can see anything. Okay, just because I showed the other one being busted, I'll show you that this one, same way. Very easy to break, huh? Okay, just did it so darn hard to work with one hand. Okay, I'll cut it open and uh, let's see what the guts are made out of, and then I'll be back. Okay, here it is. I haven't even pulled it out yet. I'm trying to do all this with one hand. So you can actually see there's a suppressor grid right there that's falling off. Quite a bit smaller than those KT88s. There's this little gold grid. Let's get that guy out of there. Now I'm going to have to stop the camera and pull it out, and then we'll uh, put it under a really bright light. I don't see anything wrong. I don't see anything terribly wrong. I guess we're going to have to put it under the microscope, too, though. I don't see anything terribly wrong there. Let's get it out and put it under the microscope. Okay, well, there it is out. Give the camera a second to focus. Looks pretty smooth. Let's check it out a little closer. Okay, I'm back with the uh, cathode under the microscope. I don't think I ever showed the microscope. It's a nice Olympus uh, binocular with I got a 1.3 megapixel uh, camera up here, and I got it all lit up down there. We're looking at the cathode, and to me, it looks pretty darn good. 
there's what it looks like on the screen. Let me focus it a little better there. It's actually very nice and smooth. As I move it around, let's see, get the right things here. Move it over here to the edge. There's the edge of it. Let's put the edge in focus. Yeah, see from the very edge all the way around, you know, the depth of field is very, very shallow. But as we move this kind of around, I don't, it sure looks a heck of a lot better to me. It's got some trash on it, but I, I think all these, this stuff right here is just probably because I was so brutal with it, uh, taking it apart. To me, I would say that looks like a good cathode. It's not full of holes, so I guess it's not the cathode from my amateur examination. I wouldn't think so. I'll put the grids under there. The, uh, the control grid is right here, and it looks good. I, mean, I don't even think we need a microscope to look at that. Under the camera will focus. We'll look at it anyway. But yeah, except for the trash that I deposited on there, snatching it apart, the uh, cathode looks pretty good to me. All up and down, looks nice and, nice and smooth. But there's no doubt that's a bad tube. Okay, let's look at something else. Before I end the video, I did want to show you how this little uh, Mac 41 amp performs. I put the uh, 5881s back in it and uh, I'm driving it uh, with this oscillator and there it is 40 watts at point one four or so if I don't wiggle the wires point THD two kilohertz and there's its waveform a little overwhelming there kind of bright I know sorry but let's see So it just won't blow us away. There you go. Very nice. Does an excellent job. 2 kilohertz. 40 watts. It will run all the way up to 50 before it starts to clip. We'll run this guy up just to where it starts to... There. Right below clipping. There. There it is. 49 watts. You can do it all the way up to 50. 51. I can be barely see a little tiny bit of clipping right there. That's still only a 0.7% at 50 watts. Does an excellent job. Amazing little amplifiers. I'm sure it's a good 50 years old. And all these tubes do the same. The uh, 70, what are these? The 7581s. The new issue with KT66. I really like these guys. These little guys right here are tough. The electro harmonics, they do it too. They work just as well. So if you got good tubes, you got good tubes. You got bad ones, you got bad ones. I don't know what was wrong with the other one, and never will. But I don't think it was the cathode in this case. Something else went wrong, and I don't know what. So there you go. Hope you enjoy. Oh, I do have one other thing I gotta show you here. Here's something. Let me put it up on the bench and I'll show you. Here's the next project. If I can pick it up one hand. Little HH Scott Stereo Master. Isn't that a beauty? Really nice shape all of the knobs are original real beauty I haven't looked under it yet I mean I haven't taken the bottom off you know it looked at the guts of it a few little scratches or tape I'm not sure what that is right there these 7591s are uh, the newer versions and they're a wee bit too big uses uh, 7199s here a bunch of 12x7s Let's see, what is this? This is Oh, that's a good old tongue saw uh, 5AR4. I haven't even plugged it in yet, so uh, that'll be the next one. And, and HH Scott Stereo Master. What a beauty. Can't get enough. And this is the last project I made, a very simple one. A uh, little uh, DB attenuation. This is from a Davin pot. So I got in and out. I can, uh, it goes from 0 to uh, minus 10 dB. And it works works uh, pretty much the same as this guy right here that I've used for some time. Actually, what's nice, what's better about this is this is completely variable. And even 1 dB can definitely make the difference between clipping and not clipping. 
so there you go. Another night.